Nine mile mooch. Wayne puts in the hours to get the results. You will never know <laughs> the relief. Pheasants in the mist. Handlers put their dogs and their shooting skills to the test in a new kind of trial. If you haven't shot on a bird or your dog is crap, then uh, you can also not get an award. We talk to fiery Welsh farmer Gareth Wynne Jones. David has the news on the news stump, and James puts together the best of YouTube in this week's Hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. This is how you make an entrance with a catapult. Bit of warm up, Mr. Bit of, bit of warm up, you can't beat a bit of a can chase. Oh! In, there you go, see? This is Telekinetic cool. can chase. <laughs> strong in this one. That was a moving target. Moving target, I thought, oh, I thought I'd have a shot. But you can't beat a bit of a, a bit of a can, can chase. You can do anything you like, accuracy shooting, whatever. Going back to shooting a can is just like being a kid again. Doesn't matter whether you're 50 or five. On fire. <laughs> Stop there, shouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> I have one more. There we go. That's not a bad start. Bodes well, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I'll go and pick that up and we'll get started, eh? Yeah. With Wayne looking like he can't miss, we head off in search of squirrels. Mr. Crow has given us permission for a mooch while he is off hunting wild boar in Germany. When they're standing nice. around and they're alert and they're twitching their tail, so they tend to you know, sit there tighter and will almost try and call you off. They'll stand there and call at you. So him twitching his tail and dotting around is a good sign he might hang about. One problem in this wood is the maturity of the trees. These squirrels yeah. can find safety up high up in the branches. It's one we could do with somebody else going on the other side of the tree. Somebody else goes around the other side and it will force them to come around this side so we can take the shot. Where it's just us two, I think he's going to play the, the cat and mouse game. If we go around, he's just going to keep going round and round and then using the tree to obscure himself. They're not stupid. <laughs> then we find one busy in the leaf litter. It's close, but not close enough. With fewer squirrels on the ground than we'd hoped, Wayne starts knocking on the oh, doors of the drays. Oh, it's there, it's there, it's there. Trying to get a shot through all these twigs and branches is really tricky. There he is. There he is. Wayne needs to grab more ammo. He says that the new steel round he's found works for all his quarry species. I've got a new ammo that I'm trialling out here, which I'm dying to tell you about. <laughs> you haven't asked me yet. These are 11.9mm. Right. So they're a perfect balance between 11mm, well actually 11.1mm, which is what I normally use. And normally when people talk about 12mm, they're 12.7mm. So you go from 5.6 grams up to 8.5 grams. Whereas because these are 11.9s, they're exactly in between the two at 6.96, so seven grams. So I'm thinking these are going to be a really good all round ammo to, to sort of cut between the two. Rather than going from 11 mil steel to 11 mil lead and 11.9 steel, I'm thinking it's going to do the job all round. Okay, and will we change between um, fur and feather? Well, this is it. This is what I'm hoping with the 11.9s that it can be an all round thing for the fur and feather. Okay. Rather, because historically up to now, I preferred the lead for fur and steel for feather. But with the balance of the weights, we have to do it on ballistic gel, Dave, won't we? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We have to do it on ballistic definitely. gel. But I'm thinking that's going to be a good all-round thing. So it's cheaper than the lead. And as you say, you switch between the two, there's not such a big difference in balance of weight, so holdovers. It'll be one, one weight for everything. OK, so we'll develop consistency with the shooter as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not switching between like five and a half grams and eight and a half grams. You're seven grams right the way through. Ideal. Hopefully. We are definitely putting in the miles and decide to have a look at the ferals that were in the main farmyard when we arrived. Oh, damn it. Oh, my God. Again, Wayne is tantalizingly close. Oh, 
as, as it is the cap, you only ever hope to be there or thereabouts. And all our shots have been oh, within like a 50, it. 60 mil circle. That sort of ranges out to 20, 25 yards. It's just not been dead center. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's the way it's going at the moment. Just nice to have one. Just one we do. We've, 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 we've walked. We've, we've walked. Oh. We, we, what time is it now? Quarter to one. We've been on it for what, four hours or so? Yeah. Um, we've seen a couple of squirrels, seen a couple of pheasants, haven't been able to get anywhere near a pheasant for a shot. Um, yeah, the ferals, we've had the near misses on the ferals. So, but it's not going to take long for them off the, off the market, I think. I hope. <laughs> We go back across to the other side of the farm and he spots a squirrel tucked up on a branch. Oh, don't move. Yes! Oh. never know <laughs> you will never know the relief of that for me <laughs> my heart is absolutely racing um, I'll get my, my club out just in case that's a shot right through the eye always wary with these not like Childley not like Childley I haven't got that big a set <laughs> oh wow He's twitching around, but that's a shot right through the head. But I always like to just make sure, make sure. Oh, there's no need to, there's no need to. I don't think we, I don't know whether people would. <laughs> <laughs> wow, oh, Dave, you don't know my relief. Oh my God, wow. Pressure shot, Wayne, we've been at this for what, four? Yeah, about four, just over four hours now. Yeah. Um, coming round that track there, literally just the, the brain kicks in and you just see something that's not not right, it shouldn't be there. I was like, no, what's that? Is that a squirrel? He, he was facing away from us, so we were on him for ages, and then he turned, come back across, I thought, yeah, we're finally going to get a shot. And then thankfully, he sat up tight, just in here, just as I could still just see through him, through there to him, and uh, managed to get a shot through to him. Uh, 11 mil lead that was, uh, as you can see, right through the eye. Um, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't tell you the relief on my face. Adrenaline's going. Yes. I, I'm just so pleased that I thought we were going to draw blank. I really think we we're going to draw blank. And I did say earlier on, there's one thing we want to get. I really want to get a squirrel. In sort of order of terms of things, for me, it's squirrel first, then a pheasant, and then ferals come last. So to get the squirrel, which is the highest on the list for me, I'm, I'm over the moon with. Awesome over the moon with. Thank awesome you. Got as normal. <sighs> Pressure's oh, off. Some close calls though. We've had some, really, we've had some close really close calls. It was only a matter of time, I think, but. You know, you, you, when you miss, and you're only just missing, it's, you're still shooting well, but it's just, you're not, you're not really, it's, you can't really beat yourself up for, for missing by half an inch. When you look at distances 20, 25 yards, and you're missing by this, it's disappointing, and you do beat yourself up, but it's still good shooting, you know? Oh. But we've got our, uh, we've got our rewards. Yeah, it's really weird, we've got one squirrel, but it means so much, I don't know. It's, it, it's massive, it? yeah, to me, it, that means I am so happy with that. It, four hours is nothing. Uh, it, it, I wouldn't care if I'm empty-handed. The only reason why I really want to get something is because you're here. But um, I would go home a happy man being out for four hours taking home one squirrel. And you're thinking, mm, Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That'll eat well. That's a good squirrel. Probably three-quarter grown. Good bit of meat on him. Or her, should I say. Really nice squirrel. Really clean. Amazing. So pleased with that. <laughs> Me too. So Me too. <laughs> <laughs> now we just find out yeah, the batteries have run out. <laughs> no, no, no. All good, all good. Awesome, awesome. It's a well earned squirrel. We have one more yeah. scoot around the barns. We're on the far left. One's in the light, yeah? Yeah. And Wayne makes contact with a couple of ferals. One we can't retrieve, but this one he can. We're off the mark with a squirrel. 
I know, the very next, the very next shot. I was trying to find where I shot him. I know I saw him as he lifted up, didn't he? Yeah. He sort of lifted up into the ball. But again, as I said before about the larger ammo, that's a perfect example of it. You know, we were on for the head shot, head and neck shot. As a release, he lifted up, but still had the power to bring him down. So he's not gone away injured. But I don't know where he's gone. Wayne plucks the bird to see the strike. As it's lifted up, it's hit its centre of the back and the ball's gone in, into the chest cavity from behind. So like I was saying about the heavier ammunition, you know, with the lighter ball, it wouldn't have necessarily, you know, brought it down, it would have flown off injured. With the heavier ball, which had the, the weight and the power behind it to go through and uh, stop it. I was able to get to it, obviously, and um, dispatch it. According to David's Garmin, it's been a nine mile mooch. And in the bag, one, one squirrel on the and two ferals. But what a sense of achievement. Not easy, not easy. Wind, flighty, sketchy birds, not many squirrels about. Didn't have a chance to get a camera on a pheasant, let alone a shot on a pheasant. Um, but we got the squirrel. We got the squirrel, <laughs> which is the main thing. That's yeah. And that's what we'll be talking about tonight. That's what I always talk about tonight for sure, but it'll make my drive home a lot easier. It's been very good. Great very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to Andy as well. Obviously for letting us down here. If you'd like to give catapulting a go, head over to Wayne's website, catishack.co.uk, where there's all the kit and info you need. Thanks, Wayne, and thanks, Andy, for the ground. Now, in this week's Field Sports Extra, we have a wildfowler doing impressions. A Welsh farmer talking sense and a dog handler in a tangle. Uh, Texas, get down. Plus, we gave away a £250 Yeti cool box and we're giving away a £264 Trespade TC8L Young Electric Mincer, kindly donated by Veschenfelder. More than £500 worth of prizes. Easiest way to win is to watch Field Sports Extra, which goes out the night before this show, only to Field Sports members. Easiest way to watch Field Sports Extra is to join those members, the Field Sports Nation, and we'll send you a goodie box. Link below. Next, two metal arms, a good length of rubber, and a tiny pouch. It is indeed David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. A charity that rescues injured birds of prey has sacked Chris Packham. The TV presenter has lost his prestigious role with Raptor Rescue, who says they were unable to get him to do any work for them. Malcolm Robbins' organisation rescues hundreds of injured birds of prey every year. He says there is also concern over Packham's apparent move into political protest, which he says has upset some of the charity's supporters. One of them contacted the charity to complain about the BBC star's admissions in his memoirs that during the 1970s, when he was a teenager, he stole a kestrel from a nest and that he collected eggs, both illegal at the time under the 1954 Protection of Birds Act. Packham, who is president of the RSPCA and a vice president of the RSPB, has been linked to Raptor Rescue since 1994. His name has now been removed from its website. We contacted Packham's lawyers for comment, but have so far received no response. Scotland's MPs have ignored pleas to vote down the controversial wildlife and Muirburn bill. The bill moved a step towards becoming law when it was passed at the first stage by the Scottish Parliament. The bill was passed by 82 votes for and 32 against, but the fight isn't over yet. It's feared the bill will harm countryside sports and the related tourism industry in Scotland if it's eventually passed. The three licensing strands within the bill, namely the grouse shoot licence, the Muirburn licence and the licensing of certain traps are totally unworkable for those involved in sustainable grouse moor management and it could actually hinder the investment in our upland landscapes. The Welsh Government has been criticised for ignoring the public over game shooting. Basque has launched its legal challenge to a public consultation on licensed game bird release. This week the shooting organisation wrote to the Welsh Minister, Julie James, threatening legal proceedings will be pursued if the results of the consultation aren't considered. Basque gathered 42,000 signatures as part of its Act Now campaign, protesting the scheme to introduce licences for game bird release in Wales from 2025. There is more on this from Gareth Wynne Jones later in the show. Meanwhile, DEFRA has doubled down on its ban on releasing pheasants near European designated special protected areas. 
Using figures for bird flu from late 2022, it's restricting the release of pheasants and partridges in or near special protection areas to stave off the potential threat of the disease. In new guidance for the release of game birds in England in 2024, the government department warns there's no automatic renewal of existing individual licenses for 2024. In July this year, Basque said it planned to launch a judicial review into DEFRA's decision, which bans release pens from swathes of the English countryside. Devon and Cornwall Police say they've spent £1 million retraining firearms licensing officers. Following the Plymouth shootings in 2021, when a man shot five people, then shot himself using a shotgun which he legally held on a temporary gun licence, Devon and Cornwall's firearms licensing service appeared to collapse. Last year, the police inspectorate criticised the force for its backlog of temporary permits. An inquiry was told that the force had 3,700 temporary permits on issue from a total of just over 37,000 licences. Devon and Cornwall now says the number of temporary permits is drastically reduced and the workforce used to process licensing has doubled. Local shooters report that it's still actively revoking certificates where it can, but that it no longer sends armed officers to certificate holders' doors. And it allows them temporarily to store guns in gun shops instead of confiscating them. One of America's most historic gun makers has announced it's closing its factory in Upper State, New York. Remington's been making guns and ammunition on the site since the mid-1800s. Unions fear the proposed closure and a move to new headquarters in Georgia will lead to the loss of almost 300 jobs. Remington has been in and out of bankruptcy protection since 2017 and is now owned by Vista Outdoors, which owns the CCI and Federal Ammunition brands. A rifle used by one of the most famous hunters in African history is to be auctioned. Denny's Finch Hatton was immortalised in the book and film Out of Africa. His 1905 George Gibbs bolt-action rifle is going under the hammer at the Rock Island Auction House in Illinois and could fetch more than $20,000. The gun was used by Finch Hatton while big game hunting in East Africa in the 1920s. It comes with several factory sealed boxes of original ammunition. A historic hunt is considering its options after a local council approved plans for a wheelbarrow race on Boxing Day on part of its traditional route. The South Down and Eridge hunt in Sussex has paraded through Lewis for generations. Now an anti-hunting group has successfully applied to host the wheelbarrow race along the same route as the hunt normally uses on December the 26th each year. Lewis Council granted the antis a licence and refused one for the hunt. Aesop's fable said a wolf in sheep's clothing would come to a nasty end. But what if things were the other way around? Scientists have pioneered new pheromone collars containing wolf hormones and are sent to be worn by sheep. Ongoing research in the alpine region of Ticino shows that wolves ignore sheep and lambs that wear the special collars. Scientists hope it may provide a solution to the growing problems caused by wolf packs in the region. And finally, here's the perfect story leading us into Christmas as you make plans as to what's going to grace the festive table. This is Hutton's Butchers in Yorkshire. Its annual display of traditional game produce has been wowing customers for decades. This year, owner Emma Briley says she believes they've had a more positive response than ever before to the collection of game birds and wildfowl, including partridge, teal, mallard and pheasants on display at their shop in Nesborough. This year, in particular, we've had an absolutely positive response. I can't tell you how positive it's been. In previous years, you've had the odd person walk past and go, oh, there's birds hanging outside. But I wonder whether, because of everything that's going on with the economic climate and everything, whether people realise um, that maybe eating more sustainably it would be better. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. I found David lying in the gutter and weeping at the weekend. As I stepped over him, I asked, what is it, David? He replied that not enough of you like and subscribe below this film. Please, can you do that for David? Thank you. Nobody says I don't listen. Now, a word from Stony Creek.
Next, it was a foggy, foggy day as the inaugural St Hubertus Cup took place for HPR breeds and their handlers. It's hard to tell through the freezing fog, but this isn't your typical field trial. We're at Prestwold Hall near Loughborough in Leicestershire for the inaugural UK St Hubertus Cup. It's a competition for hunt, point, retrieve dogs and their owners. Unlike the usual field trial, it's as much about the hunter as the dog. Marlin Hewins, who's helped to organise the day, explains. It's supposed to mimic a, a rough shooting day and, and it's very much about the ethical side of shooting, uh, about sportsmanship, you know, only shooting pointed birds and that sort of thing. We've got 10 competitors and we did a draw this morning to determine the order of the running. Each competitor gets 20 minutes. He's allowed to shoot a maximum of four cartridges, but he has to carry with him at least six cartridges. So if he has spent those four cartridges, he still has to carry a loaded gun, but he's not allowed to fire it again. It's also that the, the jury can assess the hunter and it, it, about safety, sportsmanship, that sort of thing. So if you look at the scoring, there's 20 points available for the shooting, so you get 10 points if you shoot a, a bird. So obviously you're trying to get two birds, so that's 20 points. There's 50 points available to the hunter and only 30 to the dog. But in the hunter, 50 points. There's a lot about the relationship between the dog and the hunter. So, But yeah, when you're looking at just purely on the dog, it's just 30 out of the 100. We've got two judges that are experienced handlers and shooters themselves. So at the end of the day, the hunter and dog team with the best score wins the trophy. Yeah, well, provided that they have shot at least um, one bird or one piece of game and also that the, the scores for the dog and the hunter are at least in the satisfactory bracket. You need to score a minimum of like half the points that you could get, if that makes sense. Okay. So if your dog is mediocre, you're mediocre and you shot one bird, you could be in for an award. But if you haven't shot on a bird or your dog is crap, then uh, you can also not get an award. <laughs> Marlin is competing herself today with her German wirehead pointer, Texas. Just turn two. So it's his first season, really. I don't expect much from him today, but yeah, we hope, we hope you'll find something. I kind of feel I've got nothing to lose, so I'm not too worried about it. Obviously, it'd be nice to do well, but if we don't, then so be it. Try and look at it as a good day out with friends and shooting and dogs and, you know, what could go wrong? <laughs> Marlin has drawn number five, so for now she joins the gallery of spectators to watch the earlier competitors do their thing. There's not much scent today, maybe due to the freezing conditions. The dogs are bumping game. Without a point, the hunter isn't allowed to shoot. Marlin's turn arrives. She answers the judge's questions about her gun and cartridges, and she's off. Sicko. It started with a bit of a headwind actually, but the temperature really dropped. I think we got up to a bit of a brow. Yeah, he ran pretty well. He came on point, I thought it was something, but it clearly just ran on and it, there was a game crop not far from there, so probably run into there. But no, he ran pretty well, I thought, but just was not pointing because incredibly difficult pointing conditions or scenting conditions. And then typically, the, the end of the field happened before the end of my run, so we had to break midway through, so nerves started to kick back in again. <laughs> and then moved around to here and, uh, yeah, started running in here. There were a couple of walkers, weren't there, and I was umming and ahhing whether to keep pushing him that way. In hindsight, if I'd pulled that way, then we wouldn't have put up the hair that we did, which he then whoop, 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 followed <coughs> shortly, briefly. 
But no, yeah, other than that, he, he was super steady to everything that, that got up. He didn't chase, you know, give chase or anything. And uh, so I, I am pleased. Even if I didn't get a shot off, I am pleased. I didn't end up on minus points. <laughs> <laughs> the next few competitors are still struggling to get a point in the cold and fog. Then, just as the sun starts to break through, up steps Paul Nixon from the Peak District with his GSP Cloud. I do a lot of walked up shooting with this dog, starting August on the grouse and then go all the way through to February. Don't do hardly any driven shooting, it's all just over the dog. Because it's what they're bred for, it's, they're not peg dogs really, and they just love hunting. She's now seven and three quarters, so I think she's in her prime. I think GSPs mature around five years old, and they're really good up until about nine. And then after that, then you have to think about retiring them. But uh, she's, been, she's done really well this season, she's been on fire. Having seen previous competitors, I thought the scent was poor, uh, poor but um, she showed her experience by being a bit steadier, also being able to get round the game and hold it for me. So that partridge, really nice point, held it, produced it for me, so made the shot really easy, the first shot really easy. The pheasant was a bit more difficult. She knew it was there, but struggled to get round it, eventually got round it, pointed it, but just as she pointed it, it jumped. So that's why it was a second shot, because it's easy to set yourself straight off the point if you've got a, a delay in that point and flush. So you're in control of the situation when you've got the point and flush. Yeah. When the birds jump, you don't have that, so it's, it's better um, doing it that way. Right. So the partridge was the better shot, the better production and the better shot <laughs> yeah. for me. Yeah. But, yeah. So you have to have two pieces of game. I got those in the bag, so once I achieved that, then it was just a case of running the dog and showing her. And uh, so she scored maximum points, 30 out of 30. So she held her end of the bargain up. Um, so, yes, I was pleased. There's one competitor left to run, but Paul's performance is unbeatable. He collects the trophy. <laughs> Marlin hasn't placed, but she's very happy with how Texas performed. Yeah, I was really chuffed with, with him um, up until the last five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he uh, yeah, he hunted really nicely, and uh, yeah, he, he's really grown up just in the last few months, and yeah, I'm really tough. As I say, he's normally a very pointy dog. Um, for him not to have any tells me a lot about the scenting conditions. I think it went as well as we could have expected, and more really. I think everybody had a really lovely day. Everybody says they want to do it again, so I can see this becoming a regular event, um, you know better way to spend the day than shoot over your own dog. <laughs> you can find Marlin on Instagram and for more about the UK St Hubertus Cup, there's a group on Facebook. Links to both below. <laughs> Thanks Marlin and all who took part in that. Now a word from the British Shooting Show. Unwrap the unmissable this Christmas. Book a ticket to the Great British Shooting Show today. Save 15% versus pay on the day. Enjoy free car parking and a free show guide. With the UK's largest array of shotguns, rifles, air guns, optics, thermal and night vision, stalking accessories, footwear, clothing, gun dog care, play pigeon traps and accessories, gamekeeping organisations, gun makers, manufacturers, and the largest selection of shooting retailers under one roof. It's the biggest, the best, the British. Next, back in the summer, one of the stars of the Carter Jonas Game Fair Theatre was our favourite mouthy farmer, Gareth Wynne Jones. In shooting, particularly in Wales, we have an entire government ranged against us who has said they want to close down shooting in Wales. They want to end shooting. They want to socially engineer that spirit out of us. Can we sell shooting to people like this? Listen, we have to sell it, you know, and we have to change maybe the persona um, and be more sexy, more uh, clever about how we do it. Gareth, more sexy, that's, that's good, yeah. I thought I'm doing all right. It, it, it's about selling, so, you know, they talk about it as a sport. Now, if I'm talking about me going shooting on our little syndicate shoot, you know, there's only a few of us. We pay a few quid in, we put a few pheasants down. Every single bird comes home with every single one of us. Everyone's utilised. I've got a freezer full of them now, and that's what it's about. It's about harvest, harvesting our food. Let's get the message out there that we're harvesting the food. It's not a sport. I love shooting more than anybody. You know, I love being out there. But as well, it protects my crops. 
you know, if I'm not shooting them little grey squirrels, which will be feeding everybody in the Welsh Game Fair, if you want to come, Squirrel Burgers, it's in the Telegraph today. So I'm going to be uh, switching all my social media uh, channels on the way home. I think I'm in, in for a bit of a vegan bash again. But Good, good. But let, let's get the message out there, you know, that we can do this. We can do this together by working together and selling the story of shooting fishing, hunting, that it's good for the environment. When you're standing on that peg, I do a little video. First flush out, it won't be a pheasant, it won't be a pe It'll be hundreds of songbirds, hundreds of songbirds. If you haven't stood on that peg and seen that, you don't understand what shooting's about. I've been on big shoots, three, 400 day birds. Yeah, enjoyed it, but it's not quite the same as our little shoot where there's a camaraderie that we go and we shoot 80 birds and somebody's hit a hell of a high bird and then that's all the talk you'll get in the pub. There's one guy, if he shot a high bird, you know, that's it for the season. Then he just keeps going back to the same bird and the same bird. I suppose every shoot's got one of them. But, you know, it, it is, we struggle sometimes with getting together, but that brings us together every two weeks, all the same people and there's plumbers there's electricians, there's joiners. We're not just farmers and shooters. We're just country people that enjoy harvesting our food. That's the story we need to be selling. Thanks, Gareth. And you can watch the whole of that chat as a podcast, link below. Next, from politics to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, brought to you by James Martington, it's Hunting YouTube. I've been scouring YouTube for the most interesting and entertaining hunting and shooting videos from around the world. Here's what I've found. First this week, here's something a bit different from Deer Meat for Dinner. He's out with his daughters trapping pests in Oklahoma and catches a skunk. Fair enough, but then he decides to skin it, cook it and see what it tastes like. Rather him than me. Meanwhile, Carl from MFL Outdoors sends me this one. He's out on the pheasant shoot at night with a flask of bovril, a pork pie and his thermal and watches a fox apparently trying to catch and bring down a roe deer. Horse TV Global have just released this film from over 30 years ago. A fascinating look at the Galway Blazers hunting foxes in the traditional way in Ireland. Thanks to Pear Holmseth for flagging up that one. Over to the States and Blocketh Outdoors has got himself a Gamo Air shotgun. He tries it out over a chronograph, shoots some paper targets, then heads out to hunt rabbits. Next up, Ed Gunn Leshy is shooting squirrels and chipmunks with a 9mm air gun firing tracer pellets. The effects are devastating, all captured in remarkably detailed slow motion footage. David from Predator Protection UK sends us this film. After a lot of trying, he finally gets his wild boar with his friend George in the Forest of Dean. There's an interesting comparison of different firmware in his Hike Micro Thermal Scope and a look at how he uses an old iPhone connected to a thermal spotter to alert him when something moves into the picture. Rob Speed follows up his How to Shoot Crows video with some tips on how to hit driven pheasants. He's got five tips which he says have improved his shooting and reckons they can improve your too. Finally this week, here's the latest from the ever-popular Russ the Rat Basher with what he describes as his latest epic rat bashing adventure, shooting rats in Harrogate and narrating in the style of Johnny Morris from the old Animal Magic TV programs. Well, that's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link, jamesm at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.